There, no. There's not a reputable church historian that does not uh, trace the doctrine of the Trinity to the philosophy of Plato and Philo in Alexandria, and from them, How about you, J. N. D. Irenaeus, Kelly at Oxford? Would you, would you accept J. N. D. Kelly of Oxford as a re reasonable story? I have J. N. D. Kelly's quote. You would? Sure. Would you like to? Is you got to make a quote? Give, like give us some, Bob. Yeah, give, give us, us Kelly. Go ahead. You give us Kelly. Well, you said you right, had wait, wait, wait. to He find. said, give us Kelly. Let me, uh, I've got it right here. Page 22, 21. Starting Reputable church historian. Yes, taught patristics, church fathers at Oxford. In his book, he says, He lists, I've counted them, 26 verses starting with the New Testament that show the primary foundation of that which would become the creeds found right in the New Testament scriptures. And this is what he says. He says that nevertheless the Trinitarian ground plan obtrudes itself obst obstinately throughout, talking about all these passages that he's just list, listed, 26 of them referring directly to the Trinity. And its presence is all the more striking because more often than not, there is nothing in the context to necessitate it. The impression inevitably conveyed is that the conception of the threefold manifestation of the Godhead was embedded deeply in Christian thinking from the start and provided a ready-to-hand mold in which the ideas of the apostolic writers took shape. If Trinitarian creeds are rare, the Trinitarian pattern, which was to dominate all later creeds, was already part and parcel of the Christian tradition of doctrine. J. N. D. Kelly, page 21 and 22. And I have quotes going all the way through the Apostolic Fathers from Kelly. The statement's not true, according to him, Bob. Um, John, it's uh, plain to see that uh, this discussion, uh, we've entered into it. Uh, we came here in uh, honesty. And uh, it's plain to see that you're not impartial. And, Bob, I'm just uh, presenting that, what that you, 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 you asked. You, you asked the question. You're saying I'm impartial because I wrote, I read a quote from this. No, I, I listened to your debate, and I wrote down because I had to memorize under a Harvard professor Williston Walker's Church History, which you quoted. I'm prepared to quote that. You quoted Harnack. Would you like to see what Harnack had to say? I have what Harnack said. Okay, Go ahead. let me read Harnack here for you, talking about uh, the very view that you're holding. It says. Concerning monarchianism, they could appeal, talking about the church fathers, one, to the rule of faith in which the personal distinction between the father and son was recognized. Number two, to the holy scriptures from which it was, in fact, easy to reduce the arguments of the monarchians to absurdity. Number three, to the distinction between Christians and Jews, which consisted, of course, in the belief of the former in the son. And lastly, and this was the most important point, they could cite the Johannine writings, especially in support of the doctrine of the Logos. It was of the highest importance in the controversy that Christ could be shown to have been called the Logos in John's Gospel and the Apocalypse. Here's his final statement. This is Harnack. In view of the way in which the scriptures were then used in the church, these passages were fatal to monarchianism. That's Harnack. From A History of Christianity by Kenneth Scott La Tourette, Harper and Rowe, 1953, page 260 and 261. Platonism had a marked influence on Christianity. It entered from many channels, among them the Hellenistic Jew Philo, you got your book who was there? utilized by some early Christian writers and through Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Augustine, and the writings which bore the name of Dionysius the Areopagite. The term Logos, which was extensively employed by the Christians as, as they thought about the relation of Christ to God, came from Greek philosophy, perhaps by way of both Stoicism and uh, uh, Platonism. I have, uh, I have Latin Irenaeus right, and right Tertullian, this is from Rufus M. Jones, were the first church uh, Christian teachers to begin the formation of a definite doctrine. The apologists were at one with their predecessor Philo, the Jew of Alexandria, and with the contemporary thinkers in the schools of philosophy. The supreme revelation of God they call the Logos. Heraclitus of Ephesus first used it, term Logos, 500 years before Christ. Philo, the famous Hellenist in the first half of the first century fused the Greek and Hebrew conceptions into one single blend of immense importance and of momentous future influence. Logos is the divine agent, the image of God, the firstborn son of God, sometimes called by Philo and later writers, the Theros, Theos, the uh, second God. Uh, now we could quote sources back yeah, and forth Why don't you here. go back to a few pages more and tell them what really, Latterett really said. Read it. Okay. Talking about 
the title on this is Jesus and the Gospel, the Foundation of Christianity. Not talking about 100 years after or 200 years after. Latterette talking about what the apostles themselves established. Latterette's a Cal, uh, from Calvin you College. You just quoted him. And he's a Trinitarian. Why did you quote him? Naturally, then? I quoted him to cite that the... That the uh, Why don't you give the, the full context? The doctrine of the Trinity. I can't so, quote the so whole he's, book. So he's a reliable scholar when he agrees with no. you. No. He's not when he doesn't agree no, with you. No, that's not so. That's he, quoted that's the not fact, so. he quoted the fact that it came from Plato. doesn't say that here in 50, 59, page 59. Well, look on, play, on, on page uh, 260 and 261, 1953 edition. And it will say that. And I did not take the quote out of context. Yes, I, I can read from you that if it came from, first of all, the church scriptures themselves, which is what he's saying on page 59, Look, then why do you have to worry about Philo later on? It doesn't make any difference to us where it came from. It's the Bible that we're talking about. But he's saying it came from the Bible. That's the point, Bob. Well, sure. Uh, the, Dr. Martin says the doctrine of the Trinity came from the Bible. La Tourette's a Trinitarian. J.N.D. Kelly we're said that these influences that were her heretical, they were the ones that came from the Greek philosophers, and the Christians were trying to speak to those points. Now, as a matter of politis, wrote his entire Philosophumina and his entire refutation of all heresies, tracing person by person back down the historical trees of the thoughts of, Noe of Noetus and Callistus and Zephyrinus and uh, Sibelius, <laughs> tracing their thoughts back to their historical roots in the Greek philosophers. That was the entire purpose of Hippolytus's work. They were just as much f into using Greek philosophy as a tool to help them formulate ideas as the Trinitarians were. The fact is the tool does not determine the outcome of your thinking.